In this tutorial, we're gonna make realistic fur, and I'm not talking about that hair particle system nonsense. Here's the algorithm. I'm gonna start off with a spiral that I'm gonna shape, create some duplicates with some variation, maybe make a few copies of these that are, you know, slightly different from each other. On our object, I'm gonna distribute a bunch of points, and then I'm going to instance our thing on that, make it look good with the material, that's it. So let me show you how to do that, and this video is sponsored by Squarespace, and we'll talk about that later. In geometry nodes, we're gonna start off with a spiral using a spiral node. This spiral should look more like this, kind of like a un close circle. I'm going to bring down the height, bring down the rotation until it's roughly what I want. From the top view, it should be pinching as it grows out. So bring down the end radius until it looks something like that. I want there to be like instances that are slightly varied. Some of them are short, some of them are long, and it's going to be distorted. To do this, I'm going to make some variations. So I'm going to have points. So let's say I have 10 of these. And then for each of these 10 points, not instances, for each, separate out the point. Inside of here is where we're going to put our spiral so that we can kind of give this different settings. So you can see here we have 10 splines or we could have 15 or you know whatever it is each one needs to be slightly offsetted and we can treat that by like picking a different start and end radius for each of these i'm going to pick a random value in fact i'm going to pick a single random value this node right here that doesn't come in default blender you can get for free from my node pack so literally cgmatter.com go to free nodes and you can download an add-on that will let you refresh my node pack every time i update it that will just give you free nodes lets me make the videos faster this single random value is going to be dependent on the current index so for each of the 10 of these we're gonna have a random number like 0.1, 0.2, .1, whatever it may be. This, I want to connect to the start radius, and all of a sudden, we have these variations. Since the default value is roughly 1, let's vary this from like 0.5 to 1.5, and to vary kind of the curvature of this, because they're perfectly aligned, we need some of them to coil more than others. And this is great, because I can again use a single random value, and rotations is hovering around like 0.8. So let's go from 0.5 to like 1.2, connect that to rotations, and now they're kind of different from each other. Additionally, the height, how far off the surface it goes, can also be random. So just a bunch of random values, 0.2 to 1, connect that to the height. Another way we can randomize is this end radius. How much does it pinch at the end? And I do want it to pinch quite a bit. So single random value connected to the end radius, which is around 0.6, 0.3 to 0.7. Last of all, I'm going to trim the curve, which is going to let me, you know, do this. And this will let me make some hairs longer or shorter than others. Random value with this index, halfway 0.5 all the way to 1. Connect that here. So essentially what we've done now is we've made like a custom curl generator basically. And as a final kind of hit of detail, we should probably distort this. Use the distort node again from cgmatter.com. That will give you this. I'm going to bring down the strength to like 10%, bring down the scale so it's lower frequency detail. And you can see right now the noise is kind of continuous. They're bunching and doing this kind of together. I want them to behave more separately. I can do this by taking the coordinates of the distortion, which basically tells you where should this like noise be mapped to. You can use this kind of like as a randomization seed. So why don't we take the index one more time, connect it here. Now they all act independently. And and you pick some numbers that feel right to you. And this can be considered one hair spiral. When we're done with it, we'll do one final resampling to, I don't know, it shouldn't be too much, maybe like 60 iterations. We can turn it into geometry because this is essentially a bunch of curves. Run a curve to mesh. And then what do we mesh it by? Maybe like a curve circle set to a low resolution like three. Bring down the scale to something where you can see the individual hair strands. And then let's just give it many, many more iterations like 30. This is a single hair clump. I'm going to take all of this, turn it into a node group, maybe like literally everything, control G, and this can be considered our clump or whatever. Our clump should have some exposed parameters. I want to know how many points make up the clump. I probably want to have a control of the seed in general, which I can offset by just like adding a number like one, two, three, whatever. So that should be a parameter. And then maybe we can make one more offset, maybe something like the end radius, which ends up making it look quite different. So I'm going to add one more contribution. This is going to be our end radius. Maybe one more parameter we might want to control is the strength. Very easy to do. I'm just going to expose the strength vector. And there we go. This is our node group with parameters, basically. So I could change the number of hairs. I can change the end radius. And now we have a way to make our clumps distinct. Speaking of which, let's make three different variations, or you can make however many you want. The second one might pinch to a smaller number, have fewer hairs, a bit less distortion since it's more clumped together, and definitely a different seed. The final clump, different seed for sure, extra hairs, a little pinched, and then extra distortion, maybe. So now we have three different clumps that all look different from each other and when we instance them you'll not be able to see the pattern as much i'm going to treat each of these as a instance which will help with our instancing geometry to instance i want each of these to be separate and then i just join them together so that we have a collection 
in the sense of three instances. Right here, we have three different instances with different parameters. Super simple to interpret. Then on my initial geometry, don't forget we have like a cube or whatever here. Let's in fact make it a very smooth sphere. I want to distribute a bunch of points on the faces. So we get something like this. Each one's going to represent a clump. We'll make this super dense. And then I'm going to instance on these points for each one. One of these three variants, plug this into the instance, and then make sure you have pick instance enabled. This will let you pick one of the three each time. Finally, we, we need to take this nonsense over here and make it actually legible. One way to do that is you take the scale and bring it down until you can see the actual clumps. And you can see it's starting to look quite soft. This should be a randomized value so that it's not always the same size. Let's go from 0.03 to 0.08 and make that the scale. So now they're not all, all the same size. And then finally, to get them going off of the surface normal, so they're kind of pointing off of the skin and it's like fur, take the rotation, make it the rotation. And just like that, we have furriness. Very good, very good. Bring up the density quite a lot. Don't be shy to make it like 300 or even 1,000. Let's join everything together. So we have our initial surface plus all of these instances that gets joined. And now we have a good basis to work off of. It's much more legible when it's shaded with cycles or whatever. Cycles, GPU. I'm using Blender 4, or no, I'm using Blender 5.0. That's the important part, which has a very nice sky texture update with multiple scattering. Connect that there. Pick some settings that actually make this visible. And now you can kind of tell we have the basis for our fur and it's not looking too bad, but we can make it look a whole lot better. This is the part where I tell you this video is sponsored by Squarespace. This is the service I used to make my website. You can go to cgmatter.com, go to free nodes and get the nodes that I'm using. And because I'm using Squarespace to build and host this website, it comes with a lot of features. So here you can see my Squarespace UI. First of all, it comes with a content and membership section. So I literally sell my project files, including this one. That's possible because of Squarespace payments that let you pay directly without integrating something else. Second of all, you're going to see I have these assets over here, which I use throughout the website, all kinds of gifts and stuff you might recognize from earlier posts. I like this because I can keep everything in one place. Finally, at this point, Squarespace has tightly knit AI integration, which you can use to fill content, use for design, whatever. I can edit, add a section, add a block, like a text block or whatever you want it to be. And then in here, when I edit, you're going to see this little UI right here. And let's write a paragraph about what is new in Blender 5.0. Okay, it took a second to think, and now it is filling all of our content, which you can then check, say, oh, I want to edit this part, whatever. So if you're looking to build a website, try it out. And when you're ready to take your website and you want to launch it, make it live, you can use this link in the description to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain. So now we have this fur that our goal is to make it look better, but it's already part of the way there. I think a big step for this is taking this wool and particularly these like spirals that make up the instances and we need to randomize it where we can. So for example, the rotation, I can add a random contribution. So I'm going to rotate the rotation. It turns out one of the new nodes is random rotation or you can use my custom one, whichever one feels easier. I'm just going to use my own, connect that right there, bring down the strength until it's like 10% randomized. I believe you also want to make this in local space just so it rotates about the normal. And inside this node, which right now is packed, what I can do is I can unpack this uh, by hitting that button I just hit, go inside of here. And instead of a random value that turns out to be a vector that I then scale by like a float, I'm just going to make a tiny modification. I'm going to make this multiply so I can control X, Y, Z, and I can modify the strength to be a vector, connect this back here. This is useful because is it the Z component? The Z component just rotates it about its own axis and that can be as big as I want. It can be like 100. And then for the X and Y, that kind of messes it up. But if it's subtle, it's good. I can pick some low numbers that do not mess it up. So before, after, finally, I probably want some of these hair strands to kind of go taller than they were before. So for the random scale, I like 0.03 to 0.08, but I can make that a vector that goes from 0.03 to 0.08. So it's exactly the same, but I can make the Z variation much bigger. So some of them get higher than the others, just subtle. And this will make it look more like it's being grown off of a surface. Consolidate nodes where you can, where you know you're not going to be editing anything. All of this looks great to me. And let's see what this looks like. Pretty good. And we haven't even done the shaders or anything yet. Before I do that, I'm just going to up the iteration so it better covers the surface. And it will render quite quickly. So not bad at all. And I probably want to add one more passive detail so that it doesn't exactly look like instances everywhere. To do that, I need to take these instances and I'm going to realize them so that they're actual geometry. This is going to take a moment to compute. So what I would recommend is add a bake node, which will let you do this calculation once and then save it. So let's bake on frame one. So now this is on disk or packed into your Blender file. Replace that connection over here so that it's using it. And then finally, I want to take this and apply like a distortion or whatever. So I'm going to use my distort node again, make that bad boy way, way tinier. So maybe like a fifth of a percent or half a percent, I mean, and then I'm going to add a detail to that. So of course you can play with this more, but I think that's a pretty good start to get like soft looking wool. And if you want it to look more like hair, by the way, you can always go into this clumping. And when we turn it into a mesh, you can make those hairs thinner by just making the uh, radius thinner, which of course, if you do that will involve rebaking. Now the question is, what do we do for the shader to really make it look like hair and then make that look better? Well, 
file, all I need to do is add a set material node, which will allow me to pick a material. I'm going to make one called hair, for example. This should be inheriting the hair material. The object itself can have a different material, which I can call object. They're going to be very similar in color, but using a different BSDF. So this one's going to be using the object. And now we are in shader land. First of all, I'm going to take my object and I'm going to make it more like a yellowish sheepskin, something like that. That's going to be very rough because it's going to be the skin that's underneath all this stuff. It shouldn't be very reflective. And just so this is more visible, I'm going to get rid of the background, which is looking nice, but there you go. And the difference here is instead of a principled BSDF, I'm going to use a principled hair. So even though this isn't a hair particle system, there's nothing stopping us from like using this. So principled hair, I would recommend using the melanin slider because that's more intuitive. So I'm going to get rid of all the redness. As you decrease the melanin, it's going to be like kind of like graying, whiter and whiter and whiter. So this is white hair. Somewhere around here should be blonde and then all the way to black. So just pick a color that you feel like represents the thing. Back in the object, now that we know what color this is, I guess we can edit it to be a bit more saturated to match, just so I can see the, or rather not see the boundary a bit better. And that's pretty good. I mean, really all we need to do is like change the distribution if we want so that they're not, uh, they don't have bald spots. Although I think that actually adds quite a bit of something. Maybe in the roughness, which you can think of as how fibrous is this? Maybe uh, take the roughness, bring it up. So it kind of looks more like dirty hair that got wet at some point. Maybe also the same with the radial. I'll be honest, I don't know much about this BSDF, but that's definitely looking like kind of wet wool to me, especially as you zoom in, you see it's composed of curls and now we can control this quite nicely. And I should mention kind of the one that I was using, I made in a live stream because I'm doing November every single day on the default cube channel. So far, this is what I've made for the prompts. I'm going ham. It's taken two to four, two to three hours every single day. I'm going to make the final kind of perfect blend file available on my website, cgmatter.com. Again, if you want free notes, go there. You don't need to be a member. But if you do want to be a member and get years worth of project files, then I would recommend joining. There's more every single day. There's 160 of you, close to 170. The only thing I would do beyond this that I did in the live stream, so you can check it out, is I distributed a bunch of points again, and those represent where these clumps will kind of converge. This is the one I made, very similar process, except I didn't use instancing. I used the for each zone that I modified to look substantially softer, and I did compositing. So you can check that out, and hopefully you learned something. Goodbye. See ya.